This is part 16 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to create a new item that is implement post in ASP.NET Core REST API. To get the list of resources, in our case list of employees, we issue a GET request to this URI slash API slash employees to get a specific employee. Again, we issue a GET request, but this time in the URI, we include the ID of the employee whose details we need to retrieve. And then to create a new resource, that is in our case, to create a new employee, we issue a POST request to this URI. Notice the word employees is plural and posting to this collection URI slash API slash employees makes sense because to this collection of employees, we want to add a new employee. Here is our employees controller. At the moment, we are issuing a get request to this get employees method, which returns the list of employees. And if we scroll a bit down, here we have get employee method, again to which we are issuing a get request. And this retrieves employee by ID. Now we need another method to be able to create a new resource, that is, in our case, a new employee. So let's include another public async method. We want this method to return the newly created employee. So the return type of this method is going to be task of action result of employee. And let's call this method create employee. We need to pass the employee object that we want to create as a parameter. Let's call the parameter employee. It is the post request that we use to create a new employee. So let's decorate this method with HTTP POST attribute. For now, I'm going to simply return the status code 200 OK from this method, place a breakpoint and then run the project in debug mode. We have both our web and API projects up and running. Now let's quickly test our API using Postman. To create a new employee, we issue a POST request to this URI slash API slash employees. And obviously, to be able to create a new employee, we have to pass the new employee to the server. And we do that using request body. So click on the body tab right here. And we're going to send the request data in raw JSON format. So click on the raw radio button and then select JSON from the drop down list right here. And within the body, we have to include the employee object. I have already copied the employee object to the clipboard. When creating a new employee, we don't have to pass the value for employee ID property because employee ID column in the employees database table is an identity column and it will be automatically provided by SQL Server. So I'm going to remove this property from the employee object. And then let's send this request to the server. Our breakpoint is hit. Notice when I hover the mouse over this employee parameter, the data from the request is automatically mapped to the respective properties on this employee object. Notice the employee ID property, its value is zero. Remember, we haven't supplied a value for this property because the value will be automatically computed by SQL Server. And since employee ID is an integer property, the default value is zero. But when SQL Server creates this row in the table, it's going to provide a value for this property automatically. And we'll see that in action when we return the created employee from this method. Now, the important point to keep in mind is ASP.NET Core is automatically binding the data from the request to this method parameter. And this is happening because we have decorated our employees controller class with this API controller attribute. So for this model binding to work, we either need to decorate our controller class with API controller attribute or this method parameter employee with from body attribute. Otherwise, model binding will not work. So now let's stop debugging and then include try catch block like we have always been doing for every method. Within the catch block, let's copy and paste this line. In the try block, let's first check if this incoming employee parameter is null. 
If it is null, then we haven't got the required data to be able to create a new employee. So we want to let the client, that is the caller of our API know that they made a bad request. And we do that by using bad request method. And if you notice from the IntelliSense, this method returns the HTTP status code 400. On the other hand, if employee is not null, we want to add this employee to our employees database table. For that, let's use the injected employee repository. On this, we have add employee method. So let's pass the incoming parameter to this method. This is an async method. So let's await its execution and store the result in a variable. Let's call this variable created employee. When a new resource is created, that is on a successful post, we usually do the following three things. Return the HTTP status code 201 to indicate that the resource is successfully created. We also return the newly created resource, in our case, the newly created employee. Finally, add a location header to the response. The location header specifies the URI of the newly created employee object. We'll see all these in action in just a bit. This seems like a lot of work, but it's actually very easy to implement than it sounds. For this, we're going to use ASP.NET Core built-in method created at action. Upon a successful post, we want to use the built-in created at action method. Notice from the IntelliSense, this method returns the HTTP status code 201 created. And there are three overloads of this method. We are going to use this overloaded version that takes three parameters. Now, one of the things that we have to do is in the response, we have to include the location header, that is the URI at which the newly created employee is available. For example, let's say this method creates a new employee with ID value of 5. So this newly created employee will be available at this URI slash API slash employees slash the employee ID value, in this case 5. And if you remember, within our employees controller, it is this get employee method that is going to return the employee by ID. So we're going to use this method to generate that location URI. Instead of hard coding the name of the method in a string, I'm going to use name of keyword. The obvious benefit of this is if we later change the name of this method to something else and we forget to change it here, the compiler will immediately flag it as an error. So it's always a good practice to use the name of keyword instead of including the method name in a hard-coded string. And the second parameter is the route data to use for generating the URL. Remember to retrieve employee by ID in the URI, we also include the ID of the employee. So if we take a quick look at get employee method again, notice the route parameter is named ID. So we have to provide a value for this as well. And we are going to do that using an anonymous object. The route parameter is ID. And the value for this is going to come from this created employee object. Remember, this add employee method of employee repository returns the newly added employee. So employee ID property on this created employee object will be populated with the generated identity column value. So the ID value equals created employee dot employee ID. And the last parameter is the created employee object itself. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and test it one more time using Postman. Both our projects are up and running and I have a post request here within Postman ready to go. I'm actually going to remove this email property from here and I'm going to include an additional property. Let's call it job title. And the value for this is software engineer. Now remember, we don't have this property on this employee class. So we basically want to see what happens if we provide additional data in the request. So let's click send. Our breakpoint is hit. Notice, 
email property on the employee object is null because in the request we did not provide a value for this property and what happened to the additional job title property and its value it's lost and this is the behavior we want if additional or unnecessary data is provided in the request simply ignore it let's continue execution there we go request completed notice the status code is 201 created and in the response body we have the newly created employee object notice the employee id property is populated with the database generated identity column value and if we take a look at the headers we also have the location uri that is the uri at which our newly created employee is available so let's copy this uri and issue a new get request to that specific uri Request completed. Notice the status code is 200 OK and we have our newly created employee object in the response body. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.